Welcome to today's show, The Two Witnesses Live. We have some fantastic topics to cover today. Our main topic of conversation is going to be the mark of the beast. Before we get into that, I'm going to cut to a little bit of the news before we get started. So first off, over Christmas, several multiple M-class solar flares and CMEs were recorded on December 24th, December 25th. Forecasts indicate a potential geomagnetic disturbance with a grazing blow expected in late on the 27th. We've seen a lot of solar activity lately, watchful. There's been a lot of it. Yeah, it's, uh, we're almost uh, climbing up on a 7,000% increase at this point, aren't we? Yeah, it's, well, we're at, not only that, but we're in the solar maximum. Mm. I think we, we peak to that sometime soon. Ben has covered a bunch of this, though I don't keep up with it as much as he does. It's clear the activity is really off the charts. Yeah, and this is one of the big signs for uh, the end of times, or end of this age, I should say, not necessarily the end of times. I think we say the end of times because the, the stars and the sun and moon are supposed to fall uh, when all is said and done because we, won't, we will no longer need the sun, meaning that we, uh, we won't need the 24-hour period of time anymore. So hmm. that, that phrase, end of times, is actually accurate for what's coming up. Um, there's going to be a transition of some kind. So whether that means the simulation comes to an end or are, we're just in a different dimension or in a different place in the universe, who knows? But yeah, definitely. This, uh, things are about to change and we're getting to that point to where we can see the events that were described that explain this end time event are happening now. Yeah, and you know, interesting that you mentioned the stars fall. I've often wondered if that's the satellites coming out of orbit. Could be. Yeah, that's definitely one of the items on the list that could fit that uh, description. Yeah, you know, a, a lot of the descriptions, he never explains why or how, just that they happen. Hmm. Yeah, and one of the things that is described is the, the one, one of the beasts, I believe, have power to call fire from heaven. There's been some speculation that that could be some kind of satellite or laser beam from space. Hmm. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, the other topic on the news is Iran is really stepping it up. They have mm. they're amassing at the borders now. So I and I'm not talking referencing the proxy armies either with Syria. Uh, Iran's troops actually are amassing at the borders. So this is this yeah. is a first uh, where everything else has been more of the Houthis and Syria and and other proxy armies, but now. Uh, for the first time, Iran is amassing at the borders with something, you know, in the cards for the near future. Yeah, and, and my speculation is that whatever's going to happen is going to take three months because we have that major solar eclipse that's coming up on April 8th, uh, which is the, the eclipse that finishes the Aleph and the Tav when it crosses the United States. There's a lot of speculation on that, but it seems to be a major eclipse. So whatever is whatever is happening now i'm so i'm expecting to take three months so yeah. whether that's the amount of time that it takes for israel to defeat their enemies or the time it takes for us to get to the point where they say peace and safety i know there's been a lot of variations on peace and safety but we're still waiting for that one final one that's for when they say peace and safety then sudden destruction it's definitely in the cards the bible talks about that no man not even the angels and not even christ himself will know the day of the hour yeah, I know that the the signs and the seasons, they, they provide clues, though there's been a lot of people that speculate on this actual date and time and whatnot. I'm just one of, uh, I'm in the camp where we don't truly really know. We know the signs and we know may, may know the season, but as far as that specific date, I'm not sure that no uh, any man is going to know that. So I could be totally wrong. Yeah, you know what's interesting about that is uh, we should do an entire show on that, to be honest, because I could talk about that for hours. I'll give you the too long didn't read version. We use the sun and moon for our to know what time it is, right? Right. Yeah, everybody has a watch. We know, you know, if it's nine o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock at night. And the reason we know that is because of the sun and moon. So you have the sun that rules over the day and the moon that rules over the night. Likewise, we have the moon, which tells us which month we're in, or which day in the month, I should say that we're in. So based right. on the waxing and waning and the, how full it is, we know which day within a month that we're in. And then 
the sun, depending on which constellation it is that it's in, tells us which month we're in. So that's why there's 12 constellations. Whichever one that the sun is in is how we know the month. My whole point in explaining this is God gave us the sun, moon, and stars in Genesis so that we can know the sign seasons, days, and years. Hmm. Um, there's also the planets. So there are alignments that have been proven throughout history that have been used for significant events, eclipses yes. especially. Something really interesting to do, even in, you can even do this in chat GPT, is say, um, hey, chat GPT, tell me all the major events that happened during an eclipse. And you'll get a list hmm. of things that happened. So God has set these tools for us to be able to actually know things. And this is how the, the Magi knew when the, the Messiah had been born, is because right. they were paying attention to basically God's timepiece. Right. So I believe that's a, a, a lot deeper subject because Christ makes the comment to the Pharisees, you know, you can discern the weather, but you can't discern the times. In other words, telling them that like, you know, you think you know what you're talking about, but you don't even know the stuff that's the most important. So there's there's definitely some observation that's being missed in regards right. to knowing where we're at in the day and time. That's why in these end times, it talks about watch, be watchful, you know, pay attention, look. Otherwise, you're going to suffer tragedy if you don't. So it's it's important to know that at least the season we're in, which we all agree we're in that season. Right. But I do believe it's available to know a little bit more than that. But that's for another show. Agreed. So today's topic is the mark of the beast. And my position, and my, I guess my first question is, is there a difference between those who wear the symbols of the mark of the beast and the mark of the beast? Could they be two totally different things? And the reason I say that is look at the Hindus, for example. They receive a mark on their forehead, a red dot. And that mark from a scripture standpoint, shows that they worship a false god. Just like the Islam culture, they wear a headband that says that they swear allegiance to Allah, which is also a false god. So you could say, in a sense, that both of those groups wear the mark of the beast. But is that the mark of the beast, is my question. As we progress in these end times, what we're finding out is we don't know what certain things mean until they happen. You know, there's been speculation for decades on white, what the white horse is, what seal number one is, what the red horse is, etc. What we're finding out is, is that until they happen, we don't know what they, what they are. That's part of end time events being sealed. When, when Daniel was given this stuff, the angel told him, seal this stuff up until the end times, because a lot of it, we just, it's not available to know. Right. Uh, however, there's a lot we can speculate and there's a lot we can learn from looking at the scripture and looking at history, what's happened before, in order to make some intelligent guesses. So when it comes to any kind of mark referenced in the scripture, typically it's referring to, especially since it used forehead and right hand, it's referring to what you believe. So your forehead, your frontal cortex, is where your moral center is. So the things that you believe that determine who you are and the actions that you take, take place in your forehead. And your right hand in the scripture is often used in reference to what you bless. Because your left hand is the hand of cursing. Because for sanitation purposes, um, cultures uh, in that day and age when this was written would use their left hand after they would use the bathroom. You know what I mean? So yeah. they would use their right hand is the hand of blessing because that was always the clean hand. So hmm. when it talks about the mark, it, it one way of looking at that is what it, what is it that you believe and what is it that you bless? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Which I, I guess brings me to uh, my next point. Could the actual mark be a, a biochip, like an RFID chip that not only controls your ability to buy and sell, but also controls your emotions, your empathy, almost like it's it's a mind control device, which is why, in a way, once you take that mark, you're not able to receive the salvation, not because you don't want to, just because you don't want to. I don't even know if that's needed today with the way that people 
watch, you know, YouTube and get so infatuated with things that they believe that it's almost like the uh, the behavior programming can control people. The chip's almost not even needed in some in some cases. But to your point, I do understand where you're coming from because there's that question of what is it that controls the buying and selling? Why can't they buy and sell? There's got to be is that some kind of physical item that's involved with that. And then once you take that physical item, why can't you untake it? Why can't you change your mind? So is that some kind of physical change? Is that, you know, some kind of an item that affects you physically or what is that? And I've actually got a list of four of my top candidates for what the mark of the beast, if it, if it is some kind of a physical item, what it means. Hmm. Yeah, so the first one, of course, is some kind of an RFID chip, which that's a radio frequency ID chip, like a NFC. A lot of people have credit cards that you can tap on a machine to pay. My problem with that being a, a valid mark is that it's easy to hack. It's easy to clone and replicate. So anybody with uh, you know a Flipper Zero could actually scan your RFID chip. Or a, a or type of electronic like the Flipper Zero could scan your RFID chip, and then be able to buy and sell. So that's kind of like it's it's definitely on my list because we consider something that that is required for buying and selling. That's the nice thing about fiat currency is it's paper. It's not a respecter of persons. Whoever has it can buy and sell. But an RFID chip, it seems like would limit you to who can buy and sell. And while it's on my list. It's kind of a low candidate. So I'd right. say it's probably number four on my list. The next one would be, and this is starting to be my favorite, is uh, with the current research about Islam. It turns out that the green headband that a lot of the Hamas terrorists wear on their head actually has a combination of that symbol, the key Kashi stigma. Right. Um, are, the, are the Greek characters that are listed for 600 three score and six so that goes to the forehead you know your moral center and what you bless to where if somebody is forced to convert to islam and forced to believe islam in order to buy and sell that's that's a that's a really good candidate in my mind for what the mark of the beast could be if there's some kind of a forced conversion it goes back to the point where the question is why can't they change their mind at that point? Which is what mm. keeps me leading me back to not even necessarily an RFID chip, but more of nanotechnology that's inserted. Because there's technology I'm sure both of us are aware of that none of us know about. Mm. And with the progress of AI and quantum computers, I just have this gut feeling that there's something coming that will be insertable that will not be able to be tampered with, with, let's say, a Flipper Zero that's a decade-old technology, but mm -hmm. something that is quantum entangled, that the AI mm -hmm. will control, which will control your emotions, your empathy, track you, manage your finances, almost a credit score system, whereas if you don't fall in line, you can't do this, this, and this, which is one reason that I, I kind of lean that direction and another reason I listed that question is is there a difference between the symbols of being a part of the beast system versus the mark of the beast yeah and that's a big question because what we've seen from the scriptures as this information is revealed God would not have had this written down and if he didn't want us to know and be a hundred percent absolutely certain when the mark of the beast comes because there's been a lot of questions there's been a lot of oh no if you do this thing you're going to accept the mark this is something that people will take knowingly and decide knowingly in order to do in order to believe and take this thing because there's an element of worship in other words people will believe whatever is being sold however uh, I do understand your point. So is this, you know, some kind of a brain chip that gets inserted that overrides your free will choice? Maybe there is a technology. The only thing that even comes close to any kind of technology that I could see that would do that would be something inserted into your brain. It's not that far along to that point to where it could control your emotions because they're still trying to map the brain. But maybe it is. So I completely understand your point, but it's pretty low on my list that it's right at there with that number four position of, of like, it's interesting because of the technology aspect, the transhumanism aspect, but as far as the reality of it, I haven't, I've heard a lot about 
technology that could exist, but everybody in our in this world lies. It's hard to put any stock in these things until we've actually seen it happen, you know, until we've actually yeah. seen a brain chip that actually controls a monkey that forces it to do things. Uh, when we when we start to see those things, it'd be easier to believe that. But my point is, these things were written down so that we can know ahead of time. That's the entire point. So that we know ahead of time, we can look for these things, and we can hide ourselves from the danger when we see it. That's a good point. Makes me think about, as far as when you mention maybe the Islam religion and being forced to that, this is going to be a one-world religion that unifies everybody. Mm. So I struggle with that because... It's going to be a religion that completely combined of just about everything. But not only that, the Antichrist is going to deceive everybody to make them think that he is Christ. It kind of has me leaning more towards the Catholic Church, which has that massive amount of influence, just because of all the deception already from the Catholic Church, you know, changing the Sabbath day and changing the Ten Commandments to allow idol worship and whatnot. Yeah, and that reminds me of that section in Scripture, Matthew seven twenty one through 23, where Jesus says, get away from me, I never knew you. Uh, there's people who believe that they are doing things in his name, casting out spirits, healing in his name, and he says to them, you know, get away from me. I never knew you. So this is probably my my top contender on my list of um, possibilities for Mark of the Beast. When you look at that, the symbols that were used for 603 score and six, it's the Greek uh, chi, kashi, stigma, which are abbreviations for Christ, cross, mark. In other words, mark of the cross mm -hmm. or a tattoo of the cross. We're already seeing this, like you said, because of the Catholic Church that are pushing a false Christ who violates the laws of the Torah, who um, fits their version of a Messiah, which isn't the true Messiah. So you have a large portion of the world who are following a false Messiah based right. on the Catholic Church. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of evidence that the Catholic Church is one of the beasts mentioned in Revelation 13, whether it's the first beast or the second beast, an argument can be made for either of them. However, when it comes to the mark of the beasts, tattoo of Christ's cross for the second beast is a really good candidate. And that's probably my top contender for what that mark of the beast is, because you're going to have people who are willingly believing something despite given evidence. And I think that's where the two witnesses come in. You have two witnesses who are given power from the Creator to control the weather and the bugs, just like Moses and Elijah did, in order to lead people out of this deception. And they're going to be forced to make a decision. Like we have these two people, or two groups of people, with supernatural ability that are leading us out of these religions. We're just going to decide to stay in our own religion. So that's where you get that moral center and that what what it is that you bless is they refuse in the face of obvious evidence to believe the truth. Yeah. The scripture mentions that when the Antichrist comes, that he will deceive many into making them think that he is God. He will perform signs and miracles. And is you know, they said the deception is going to be so thick that even a lot of believers are going to fall for it, which is kind of what leads me back to the Catholic Church and the Pope being the uh, false prophet and whoever the Antichrist is, is that they're going to make it seem like this is actual Christ, when in all in turn, it's just the Antichrist making it appear as Christ's return. Does that make sense? Yeah, whatever they're going to do is going to be convincing. You know, it's going to be something that people maybe were raised with and re have just refused to confirm for themselves. So so often when I'm when I'm talking with people when it comes to the scripture, they believe things that they were told and they've never ever taken the time to actually confirm from the scripture. Like there's people who have literally never read the scripture that all they do is repeat what they heard in church what their parents told them or what a friend told them and they never confirm it for themselves and they believe these lies 
to the point of death. As sons and daughters of God, it's our responsibility to confirm these things. In 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We stand approved before God. We don't stand approved before anybody else. So the most important thing we can do is confirm what it is that we believe so that we're not repeating lies when we're telling people what it is that we believe. You know, hmm. know who you yeah. are. Don't be, don't be someone who's been programmed from predictive programming, from, you know, what you've heard on TV, what you've heard in church, what you've heard from other people. Know who you are and what it is that you believe. Yeah. And I think this is another thing that makes me think that it will be something based around the Vatican is because, keep in mind, the folks that worship Islam, Jesus is highly integrated into the Quran. They talk about Jesus more in the Quran than they talk about Muhammad. Yeah. So, you know, in the back of the Muslim's mind, they're always considering that fact. So when this massive deception happens, it will be easier to convert those who are of faith of Islam than it would be to convert those of Christianity to Islam. Because yeah. the, the Muslims, are, they already have that implanted in the back of the mind because the Quran talks about Jesus so much. So when yeah. the Antichrist appears and performs all these miracles and wonders and the Pope, the false prophet, is pushing this new agenda and this one world religion, which he already is, it will be so easy to unify everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's more in line with my my favorite candidate for the mark of the beast is something that people are going to be convinced of. And it's because they haven't checked for themselves. They just they believe it and they're like, "Oh, is this all I need to do to be able to eat?" No problem. I'm already doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. But it, I I still have that lingering suspicion that AI is going to be involved somehow, which is why Inside, I keep falling back to that bio nanotechnology just because yeah. this is how they will enforce everything. It yeah. will be difficult to enforce on such a 8 billion you know, person scale what they believe and what they wear physically on their forehead. Whereas the AI being able to track with a inserted bio nanochip, that takes it to a whole new level. I mean, yeah. a whole that's new why, level. That's why it's that's why it's number four on my list. Is there's there's definitely enough evidence to make that argument. How do they enforce buying and selling? Uh, you know, at, at the global scale, and we can see the the lead up to that in the in the fact that they're trying to destroy fiat currency. Uh, you know, these governments desperately want to get to a digital system. Absolutely, and it seems like it's absolutely for that explicit purpose to be able to control people right control track force their will you know this digital currency will start out as a good thing but at some point it will shift into a social credit score type system like the WEF talks about where depending on your carbon footprint you know where you stand in society your beliefs blah 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 it will affect your ability to buy, sell, trade, travel. And then at some point, a disaster will happen and the Antichrist will come and be that savior that will pull everybody out of the ruins and offer some sense of normalcy and everybody will sign up for it. Just to have right. that, that normal life again before uh, tragedy. Yeah, and we're already seeing this in uh, China. Yeah. You know, they're, the way that their economics work over there is you can be punished for what you say. You can be punished for what you do. And you can even be punished for who you associate with. And it's all controlled by other currency. Yeah, and then uh, the fourth one on my list is one that just recently I learned about. So I only had three items on my list for the Mark of the Beast. Now I actually have a fourth one based on a YouTube video that I'd watched over uh, the holidays uh, regarding the Antichrist, um, a new perspective on who the Antichrist is, which is in lines with what we've been thinking in regards to the Catholic Church and the Pope. But their take on the Mark of the Beast was 
the uh, the Sabbath day, right? Uh, being changed from Saturday to Sunday. Uh, I never thought that this would actually make it onto my list of candidates, but they make a compelling argument. We'll leave the oh, link for that video. We did. Yeah, we'll we, leave uh, the link I, for that video in, in the uh, in the description below, so you guys can check it out. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's really a compelling video. I actually posted in the community chat a link to it just because I had never thought about that concept, and his argument was so compelling because think about. How many have always gone to church on Sunday, mm -hmm. where the Bible is very clear, on the seventh day we rest, which is Saturday, where the Catholic Church has essentially changed that to Sunday. So this has been in the works for a long time, and especially how on their decree, when you go on the, the, you know any website about Catholicism, they've changed their Ten Commandments. I believe it was the Second Commandment, where there's no idol worship. They've done away with that, allowing idol worship. God is pretty clear in the Bible about not adding or taking away anything from His Word. Yeah, and that's what leads us towards uh, you know the Catholic Church, and they've definitely changed those times. They've definitely changed the commandments, and this is very pervasive in our culture. A lot of Christianity is based on doctrine from the Catholic Church, and they don't even realize it. Like, a, hmm. like I'd say probably ninety five percent of Christianity um, takes some doctrine from the Catholic Church and things that they've changed. It just yeah, sounds convincing. Because everybody says it, and this is where it comes. That's why it's so important to double check this stuff for yourself. Know what you believe. Yeah, I mean, think about how many churches hold service on Sunday instead of Saturday. Almost exactly. every almost every church I know. Yeah, yeah, I do know some churches they hold services on Saturday, but for the most part, almost I would say the ninety nine percent of the Christian organization it, it's Sunday church, and for me. I've always thought about it Sunday being, you know, the day of rest as well until I, you know, it's funny how you learn something new all the time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's important to constantly be learning and constantly be verifying and checking these things for yourself. Know what you believe so you're not repeating a lie. Agreed. All right, folks. Well, that's all we have time for today. We look forward to the next show and we'll see you then. Take care.